it's really impossible to talk about South Sudanese politics without talking about oil. I mean, this is a country whose entire path to independence was more or less based off the fact it was a petrostate. The politics in the country soon after independence uh, heavily revolved around who basically controlled this oil revenue. And a lot of it was, you know, basically disappearing. Even though the government is still receiving a lot of money from oil revenues, very little of that oil actually finds its way to the national budget. So what happens to its, it produces up to about 170,000 barrels per day. Uh, about 60% of that goes to the oil companies uh, themselves, the Chinese, predominantly Chinese and Malaysian companies who, who produce the oil in South Sudan. Um, and then that leaves South Sudan with about 40% of that, which is still a substantial amount of revenue. Um, out of that, you know, 28,000 barrels per day uh, go to Sudan at the moment, or at least it's, it's technically supposed to, um, to pay off what I call basically the, the, the divorce settlement between Sudan and South Sudan over how to handle the oil when, when South Sudan split off. You have unknown amounts of diversions that go to the state-owned uh, oil company uh, Nile Petroleum, often called Nile Pet. Uh, by law, you have 5% um, of that money that is supposed to go to the actual uh, oil producing areas so that they get some benefit from this. Uh, in effect, audits of that money have shown it, it basically the money is not going to the ground. Um, a lot of it has been misdirected. So that money is, is disappearing. That way um, you have money which is going to pay uh, the debt they've taken on by pre-selling their, their early oil, right? So some of the production that's coming in now is paying off previous debt. So then you have a portion of money, uh, 10,000 barrels per day, 30,000 barrels per day, it's sort of fluctuated, that is siphoned off directly to special projects overseen by the office of the president. These are infrastructure projects. And that money has been subject to a lot of allegations of corruption and mismanagement. So by the time you get to the budget, you're, you're really left with a trickle of funds. Um, and it's difficult to even figure out how much it is that's coming in. But the fact the government can't even uh, pay its own workers uh, indicates you know how little is left by the time it, it, it we do get to the budget and we think the heart of the problem is really that the oil money coming into the government is disappearing and this really comes down to why we even decided to write this report so we really zero in on everyone sort of rallying behind going back to South Sudanese law and what's promised in the peace deal and that's that the oil uh, that's paid to South Sudan go to one single oil account and that that is a public oil account and so at least at a top level, you can see how much oil money is coming in, um, and then that money can be traced back to a budget. South Sudan's made so many numerous commitments for financial reforms. Uh, there's over 60 of them in the peace deal. There's a smaller set that they've promised to the International Monetary Fund. The problem with that is that basically people want everything uh, from the government, and in fact, they're mostly getting nothing. If you don't fix the problem that the oil money is disappearing, when it enters the government and they're not even accounting for how much oil money they get, it's really hard to see how to proceed forward.